Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about Season 3, Episode 17, titled The Afternoon Plane. Or as I call it, The Afternoon Nap. Which is pretty much what happened today when I watched this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it originally premiered on February 20th, 1987. It is written and directed by David Jackson. Now, we're familiar with David Jackson. He directed French Twist. He directed and wrote Stone's War, and he also directed Walk Alone, which actually, mostly, you were saying, this episode has a lot of parallels with Walk Alone. It's all tubs. He's got a thing for tubs. (laughs) And he's by himself. He's got no backup. True. Yeah, no backup. Well, he had... Wait wait a minute. You called Marty no backup? (laughs) He was a one-man wrecking crew in that one. (laughs) Yeah, but no, but it's all centered around tubs. You you know, I'm surprised you didn't say that he directed The Great McCarthy, I would have thought. (laughs) Yeah, with the connection there, maybe, you know. So, or, or uh, maybe an episode of Fantasy Island, because this episode to me kind of felt like Tubbs was like guest appearing on an episode of Fantasy Island. The planes, the planes. Uh, <laughs> that's all you know from that show. Huh? That is, that's all that I know. Yes. And I'm, I'm okay to admit that. I'm okay. <laughs> Blasphemy. Before we get started, I can check in and see what's going on in each other's lives. And guys, Stranger Things season two premiered on October 26th on Netflix. It's a huge TV cultural phenomenon. It's a huge hit maker and it covers everything 80s. The show has just gone into the year 1984. And you know what's missing from the hundreds and hundreds of references it makes in the show? Miami Vice. There's no Miami Vice? There's no reference to Miami Vice. Well, what kind of show can it be then? (laughs) I've never seen it. Well, it is 84. Not like they've gotten to the best of Miami Vice. Maybe it's coming. But it's like, that was the heyday. So, like, 84 was when it came out. And it was like... Yeah. I mean, it would be real easy to throw in some pastel shirts and white pants pulled up to your nipples. (laughs) Yeah, well, I'm just saying, maybe season three is the year they touch on it. John, you have me hooked now. Because season one and two of Stranger Things, I haven't watched. And I actually don't really have that much desire to watch Stranger Things. But if you promise me that in season three, one of them will be wearing the Marty mustache, (laughs) I'm in. (laughs) I'm in. I will watch that show. (laughs) Well, speaking of Marty's mustache, we get no Marty mustache in this episode. In fact, we get nobody from Miami Vice except for Crockett for a few minutes. So let's go over and talk about this. Yeah, but it starts with a sweet mullet. (laughs) we open up at a wedding it's like is this a wedding at to a mannequin but no it's just like the decoration that's there (laughs) is this mannequin (laughs) with red lipstick on i like how they tried to act like it was possibly tubs wedding right in the very beginning you know saying the vows and they just have him in that girl that I don't remember Vanessa, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Alicia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're right. It does look like the get because it looks like Tubbs is with us with his old, I mean, with a new woman. And he's <laughs> he might be getting married, but he's not getting married. John, like I was saying, she looks an awful lot like Vanessa from an earlier episode. Am I wrong here? Well, you know, that's because uh, she kind of is Vanessa. She's Maria <laughs> McDonald, who played Vanessa in The Great McCarthy. And she also plays Alicia Austin in this episode. She's the only actress to ever play two of Tubbs' love interests, mostly because that's kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> so, maybe they especially dated since, or something. Maybe they really dated. Uh, maybe that's maybe. why she. Maybe oh. it's why she came back. Maybe like he was seeing her and he was like, oh, let's put her back in it. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> w- what's great is that if, if you remember, Tubbs arrests Vanessa at the end of the Great McCarthy. Because she's a murderer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So maybe this Alicia is just in witness protection. Maybe it's really Vanessa, but she rolled over on McCarthy. or, or <laughs> That would be a better story. Someone but related. <laughs> unfortunately... <laughs> Now, I know you guys make fun of this because you're like, maybe in the 80s, no one paid attention. But I told Dominic this. I've watched this show many times, many, many, many times. I've watched this episode many times. I never knew that it was the same person until you said that. I never noticed it, that it was the same girl. So that's what that's what it tells you right there. See, it was my impression, based on the conversation with Sally later in it, that most of Tubbs' relationships, after they get sweaty busy, they leave to some tropical island to never be seen again. Like after that experience, they just escape. But they do get sweaty. (laughs) 
greases them up good. <laughs> Which Alicia finds out. I mean, Vanessa goes through again. <laughs> it might not be a good idea to invite the duo to a wedding. The last time they were at a wedding, it ended in gunfire. I mean, uh... <laughs> Several people got shot last time. <laughs> but mm-hmm. this is really short scene, though, because Crockett's all bitter because he's talking to Tubbs and Alicia. And Tubbs bought a raffle ticket off of some kid at a church. And he won a free vacation to this island called St. Gerard. And then Crockett's really bitter and he's upset. And then Tubbs is kind of making a joke at his expense. And then they cut to the airplane landing in St. Gerard. And that's the end of anyone else on the Miami Vice team in this episode. The rest of this is just Tubbs wandering around this little island. And we'd like to thank you for flying Bill's Discount Airlines. (laughs) It is a tiny, tiny plane. That lands on a little island in a dirt field airport with a shack. So it was like when we landed in Mexico (laughs) 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 on the dirt field. (laughs) Immediately, I was like, Tubbs got hosed. This isn't a (laughs) tropical island. This is... This is like some one horse dirt road shack place. (laughs) And of course, as soon as Tubbs comes stepping off the airplane, there's someone standing in the airport his name's leon and he's got a smirk on his face and as soon as tub sees him he like stops dead in his tracks looks at leon and there's this tension between them he like freaks out as soon as he sees him yes because as we find out later that leon was supposed to get the chair after a murder yeah. case yeah he's gonna be put to death and then he escaped on a parole they not, never actually talk about how he got out parole. no they don't actually ever talk about how he got out he says he's paroled and Tubbs insinuates that it must have been someone pretty powerful to pay off enough people to get him paroled. We They're find ins- out later he really wh- wasn't needed. I- <laughs> <laughs> yes, like- <laughs> but basically w- what we're supposed to infer later in the episode is that Calderon bribed people to get him off so that he could come there and, I don't know, make coffee for Calderon. <laughs> so he'd come there and be inept. <laughs> Yes. That's about all he pretty much does. He hangs around the island for a while, and then he doesn't do anything. So Tubbs is supposed to be here on vacation. That's what Alicia keeps reminding him, even after he freaks seeing someone who's a convicted murderer hiding out on this island, and they recognize each other. Leon also walks up and says, I know you didn't bring your gun because this is out of your jurisdiction. So I know you ha- I have you here with no guns because that's because you're a good cop and you wouldn't bring it out of your jurisdiction. And then Leon says, I'm just here on vacation, just like you, Tubbs. And I might believe that because the person playing Leon is Vincent D'Onofrio. And he might have just been there on vacation when they were filming. It's like, hey, you want to be in this for a few minutes? Come on over here. (laughs) (laughs) And Vincent, obviously, from Full Metal Jacket from uh, in 86, he played Private Gomer Pyle. So he was actually a pretty big part in that movie. That was kind of his breakout role. He starred for years on Law and Order's Criminal Intent from 2001 to 2011 as Detective Robert Gorin. I know him from a Netflix series plays Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin, which he's just done a fantastic job doing. A few things you might not know uh, about the No Frio. While performing in many NYU student productions, he also worked as a bouncer at the Hard Rock Cafe and a bodyguard for musician Robert Plant and uh, Yul Brenner. Wow. Uh, while he was trying to break out, he also worked as a delivery man for a short time. Broke out in full metal jacket where he actually hurt his knee on an obstacle course during the during shooting, which he actually had to get surgery from. Wow, I uh, can imagine he, D'Onofrio coming up to deliver you. It'd be the most intense pizza delivery you'll ever get. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's also officially signed on for season three at Daredevil. Yep. He's already so, talking about it on so Twitter. So Fisk is coming Good. back for season three. Did you know that he turned down a role on The Sopranos? Why would he do that? <laughs> Who knows? I, I don't know. He must have been doing something um, else at the same so time or something. Oh nine, he made his musical debut as co- comedic country singer George Geronimo Gherkin at Joe's Pub in New York in 2014. He actually released two songs, including a, uh, one of those being a song called I Am a Hamster. <laughs> this has um, taken a turn. This has taken a turn. <laughs> and he has talked openly about a Gherkin documentary or mockumentary. So this got weird. 
<laughs> it did. This went down a road I wasn't prepared for. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I try for, Dom. That, that's, I'm always just trying to throw you off. <laughs> when we come back from the opening credits, we're back at the airport, and Tubbs again is telling Alicia about Leon that he was scheduled to get killed by the state, but he feels like he should stop off at the police station and tell them that Leon is there. And Leisha's like, we're on vacation. Like, just let it sign. Just totally killing the vibe. Come on, Rico. Knock it off, man. You're there to sip <laughs> mojitos and lay on the beach. <laughs> so they get in the taxi. And, of course, you know, the police station is along the way. So they get out and go talk to the cops and Tubbs is telling the police officer behind his desk like you should be interested in this this is a convicted murderer we need to get him report him to the states and he's like look I'm really into eating this lunch and your woman is really attractive let me just let me smack my lips and look at her for a little while <laughs> the, this whole town is very Mayberry they've got the one cop and he's like like, like I don't really care you, you know, I know where you're at. You're at the one hotel we have. <laughs> and they don't have any phone systems or anything. They can't connect to the mainland. Everything has to be done by mail, which goes out on that one plane that comes in and out e every day. Why would you live there? Like, why? Why would anyone want to live there? paradise. Wait, I got a rant on that later. <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't that. come back to that now. <laughs> <laughs> the officer also confirms. Yeah, don't that believe in phones. Wi-Fi's not working. <laughs> they don't even have cars. They only have that one stupid weird taxi. tractor taxi that drives yeah. you around. It looks like the <laughs> duck boat in Seattle or something. <laughs> they have more than that. Jump well, to the that... scene of Tubbs horseback riding. <laughs> this oh, is yeah. my favorite scene oh, yeah. in the oh, entire yeah. series. Well, well, we find out that, that there's only one other officer. It's just this officer and one officer named Ruben. They've confirmed it. It'll take a couple days for my mail. So then we go to the vacation montage, and this is what you're talking about, John. It's them having fun. Yes. <laughs> the couple checks into the hotel, and then they go do vacation stuff. Right, John? Yes. Tubbs, Tubbs horseback riding is now my new screensaver, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> they horseback ride down to the beach, then they get off the horse and stand on the beach and spin around for five or ten minutes. I don't know what the hell they're doing. We've never horseback ride. How come we have never done that? Because <laughs> I'm afraid of horses and you know that. <laughs> Fine, goat. After they spin around for a little bit, Tubbs and I keep wanting to call her Vanessa, Alicia, start licking it's each okay. other. Vanessa. <laughs> They start licking each other's fingers. They go back to the hotel. What? Tubbs starts giving so a creepy back massage. And then it turns into sweaty Tubbs sex scene. And it is gross. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> she slips right off him at one point and just falls right out of the bed. <laughs> I mean, right away, right to the sex scene, he's already all sweaty. Like, they haven't done anything. Yeah. You know, was Tropical Island the best choice? Maybe no. they should have just gone skiing or something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning Tubbs wakes up early goes out onto the veranda and he sees a boy running across the golf course and he has this vision back like that's that little punk that sold me the tickets to come to this island there can't be two of those boys <laughs> no shit Tubbs <laughs> no there Tubbs, can't be two uh, of these Tubbs boys. was hoodwinked <laughs> they can fooled we, him can we say that at this point when I've after I've watched this episode multiple times, uh, the first time I watched this episode, that I totally thought that was gonna be his kid, even though I know chronologically it couldn't work. Like the kid's too old, but I was like, maybe that's his kid. <laughs> 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 maybe they mature faster the on this island. He's now five. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But no, my dad, my hopes were dashed. Tubbs goes running downstairs and he sees the kid talking to the clerk. The kid is saying that Xavier Calderon is there and he runs off where Tubbs can catch him. So then Tubbs goes over and just grabs the clerk by the shirt collar and holds a knife to his neck. And to find out that Xavier Calderon is Orlando's cousin, Orlando Calderon. So I know we mentioned this already last week, but this is a... This is a Calderon story and the last Calderon story. For how disappointing this episode kind of gets to at the end here. Like, this is it for Calderons, which is some of the best stuff from... This is all the best stuff from season one, essentially. And no kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Now we know that Calderon's cousin's in town. And now we know Orlando's coming to town. So Tubbs now knows that it's a trap. So he runs up to tell Vanessa, I mean, Alicia. I mean, <laughs> Vanessa. Um, Alicia. Let's just call her Alicia. Goes up to tell the woman in his room that someone <laughs> might be there to try and kill him. <laughs> and she's not that upset about it. Is it just me or no? Well, first we see that... Tubbs is like, hey, maybe there's all this stuff I never told <laughs> yeah, you. By I was the in way. another relationship. I had a kid. I killed her dad. They have a lot of history with the Calderones. And she's like, there's a lot of backstory here that you're not telling me about. Also, can we talk yeah, about how he it. never calls the girl that died by her name? He's like, and he killed my woman. <laughs> like, what's her name? <laughs> you remember her name? Her name was <laughs> Vanessa. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when Tubbs says it, does it sound more crazy? Like when he goes through all that? So yeah, I killed his dad, and then <laughs> and he killed, he my, killed my woman, uh, and killed and I my. Killed... So I tried to kill him. <laughs> it's a pretty deep history that he has with the Calderones, which is also interesting that they decided to single out Tubbs specifically. Then more people on the. This is just an elaborate or... episode of Maury Povich. <laughs> well, they singled him out because he he had the kid with her. That's why he singled him out. He's the one who actually, it's his fault, right? Fault the dad died. If he would have just stopped sleeping with the daughter. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as I remember in uh, the Calderon's one Demise him. Part 2, that Ca- Crockett's actually the one that shot and killed Esteban. But did Crockett sleep with the sister and get her pregnant? No, because Crockett, he kept it in his pants that time. <laughs> Unlike <laughs> sweaty tubs. That time. I said that there. time. <laughs> Hey, Crockett's never slept with a suspect. We're going to come back to that. No, he hasn't. He's never slept <laughs> yes. with a suspect. Yeah, yeah. He slept with the girl who's addicted to drugs, but she wasn't a suspect at the time. In Stone's War, he's sleeping with a woman that ends up being a suspect. She's not a suspect at the time. True. So yeah, John, you're right. Now we know Xavier's in town. Orlando's coming. This is all a setup just to get Tubbs there. That way they can kill him. So now Alicia and Tubbs are in frantic mode to try and get off this island. They head over to the airport. It's just this shack, so I don't know what Tubbs is going to find out there. But And that's where we get confirmation. There's only one airplane a day. They can't reach. The radio can't reach anyone else. They have no idea when the airplane's actually going to come in. And they're just out there all by themselves. So they can't get any help. Yeah. Didn't we- it comes in every other Tuesday sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> on Wednesday. Depends on how Bill feels. And this person working the airport calls himself a Jimmy. <laughs> we have higher expectations than you, Jimmy. <laughs> island jimmy they're the best <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile leon is waiting for xavier who shows up on a pretty sweet motorcycle <laughs> he's got a gun in a little backpack on the on the gas tank he's got his purse and his fanny pack he's ready <laughs> he shows leon the gun and then the police captain comes up and he says he's leaving the island and then xavier pays the captain and says orlando doesn't forget those who help him and he throws some money on the ground and drives away which was unnecessary so- really <laughs> He did what you it wanted really to do. It really was. It, if you've ever seen a Western, this is like unfolding just like a Western. You know, the sheriff's like, I, uh, I've had enough. I'm out of town. The Calderon gang is riding in and they're going <laughs> to uh, kill any of us law folk. <laughs> so he takes off and then it's up to a reluctant outsider to save the day. <laughs> you are so right. <laughs> yeah, but the sheriff never actually leaves. He just puts himself in his shuttered, his shuttered house and closes the things, <laughs> right? And like all those westerns where they're like looking out, like, but I'm not gonna go help, but I'm watching. <laughs> so then Tubbs heads down to the docks. He tries to charter a boat, and no one will take him. There's one man who kind of hints like he would be willing to take the money to get him off the island. Another boat captain grabs my shoulders and sits him down. And they say, no, look, we're not interested in going out on on a Sunday. We don't work on Sundays. We'd rather watch a plane come in. Yeah, they're a bunch of jerks. <laughs> <laughs> These series of scenes right here in the middle where we, we find out that the public that lives on the island doesn't like Tubbs because he stopped the cocaine trafficking through <laughs> yeah. the islands. And that ruined their lives. Now they actually have to live on this podunk island without... <laughs> Cocaine, I guess. Yeah, they need this cocaine is this to weird, live there. unnecessary. <laughs> th- this strange storyline about how they missed the cocaine trade. <laughs> and this episode gets does get into this weird spot now because we're gonna switch scenes often and fast. We're gonna go here and there and here and there and here and there, like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There's nothing happening of any substance in any of these moments. 
So, for example, Tubbs and Alicia head over to the police station and try talking to Ruben. And Ruben's like, you can't have a gun. I can handle this myself. I don't need your help. So Tubbs storms off. Alicia then tries to convince him that we should stay and hide. And then we'll leave later. And Tubbs is like, bitch, please. They're after me, not after you. <laughs> Where are they going to hide at? There's only one hotel. <laughs> There's only one house. I don't even know that. that all you see is the one building in the docks. <laughs> they should rent the one horse and ride to the other side of the island. <laughs> Alicia heads over to the airport and she buys a ticket home on the airplane that's going to come in that afternoon. Leon and Xavier are there and they just happen to have two tickets left to get on the plane that seats like five. <laughs> Four and a half. <laughs> 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 Melissa, I think this is when you first started asking the question that we're all wondering. Why are Tubbs and Alicia just wandering around this island all by themselves? Uh, also, like, why does he keep leaving her places, too? Like, isn't he not worried about her being... He's like, whatever, I don't care about you. I gotta sit myself. <laughs> he, keep, he leaves her at the hotel. He tells her, like, go pack your things. He's not worried that someone's gonna kidnap her and, like, hold her for ransom or murder her. I mean, he has bad luck with women. <laughs> That would have made this episode a whole getting, lot more interesting. This would, if this if she got killed, that would be his third woman who got killed. Remember the girl that worked at the club or whatever that told him about the drug deal going down? Oh, she yes. got killed too. Oh, yeah, I'm he still not care. convinced Crockett didn't shoot her. <laughs> Straight bullet. I think the better question is: Did we misunderstand Leon? Uh, I mean, he really isn't trying to kill Tubbs. Maybe <laughs> he really is on vacation. Really Maybe is. Leon's a great guy. We just don't understand that. <laughs> Tubbs is out stumbling around, and he finds his way into a store. He not finds way. He kind of muscles his way he into a store in. that's closed. The man is trying to tell him that yeah. we're closed, and then he sees Sally. Sir? The man is really adamant. Man, like we are closed you cannot come in here he also says later that there's no guns allowed on the island so he doesn't have a gun but but Tubbs like let me in here oh wait i know you we have greased you up before <laughs> <laughs> we've gotten slippery Dude, together he, so Tubbs is like all push give me a gun buy, sell me a gun you know and the guy's like like sir this is a bakery like we don't know what you're talking about <laughs> I know it's like a grocery store. Like, what are you talking about? I got no guns. That's just going to random people. Sell me a gun. Give me a gun. You have a gun? Give me a gun. <laughs> Dude, and then he sees Sally and he gets all like, like caught back, you know, and he starts acting like, oh, oh, you're the one. Uh, I'm sorry I never called you back. <laughs> That's why I'm saying I think. This episode is proving that if you have a sweaty experience with tubs, you need to flee the area and ne <laughs> to never return. <laughs> he has bad luck with women. After he has sex with them, they never want to see him again. <laughs> Ball keeps bouncing down the street. We stop off to the police station, see Ruben getting ready. It's basically a death march. He's loading up his gun, getting his sunglasses. He's an idiot. He does not know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Down at the docks, Tubbs has cornered the man who like, gave the indication at the previous co conversation with the, with the boat captain, so he'd be willing to take him. He's kind of cornered him. It's like, T take me out on your boat. And the man's really nervous, but he eventually says no, because the other captains come walking up behind him. So he bails on that. So that's going nowhere again, because you know the island is the size of a postage stamp. So he has to hit the docks multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, I'm starting to think St. Gerard is not a real island. <laughs> no, I think it's not a real island again. Back at the island inn, Ruben is there to go see Sally. So they're a thing, apparently, which we don't get any backstory on. Just kind of find out that they're a thing. Because there's a picture of them together on the on the deck. He the tries desk. to kiss her, too. She says, no, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you might want to get that last one in there, Sally. <laughs> you don't last that much longer. <laughs> Unfortunately, you were correct. He cannot handle Calderon. <laughs> he never even gets to see him. You gotta give him though. He's got a lot of pep, you know. He's like, he's like trying to tell her, like people are gonna like me if I kill Calderon. He's got a lot of drive. He's pretty zippy. But. He literally <laughs> says, "Then maybe this island will show me some respect if I take care of the Calderons." Well, he doesn't get that respect. So. <laughs> and she's like, "No, you can't do it because it, it takes a better, a, a bigger man to do it." And Tubbs can do it because he's a New York cop, <laughs> not a Mi <laughs> not because he's a Miami cop, but he's the only, maybe the only man who can do it because he's a New York cop. <laughs> 
Ouch, Crockett. <laughs> his whole plan, by the way, Ruben's whole plan is to kill Xavier and Leon before Orlando shows up, and then he can take care of just Orlando on his own. Arrest them, kill them, whatever it is, he's just going to take care of them before Orlando comes in. So still two against one. Ruben leaves, Alicia shows up, and then so does Tubbs. Alicia got the plane ticket. She's like, we'll just stay here, and then we'll leave together. And Tubbs immediately asks, what well, room is Sally in? Yeah, it doesn't even <laughs> tell her who the hell Sally is. <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes up and well, talks and to her. What's weird is that eventually they meet, and Vanessa and Sally become like best friends, chilling together in the airport just, lounge. Vanessa just walks into Sally's room. She doesn't even like knock or anything, and she's like, "Oh, so you're like." <laughs> <laughs> is it just me or is Sally like the older version of Vanessa? She looks just like her. I love that we're interchanging I, Vanessa I, and Alicia. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I love how I've gotten everyone to call her Vanessa now. Because I just keep referring matter. to her just as like Vanessa. switching around all yeah, the time. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tubbs goes in to talk to Sally. And I know some differences. You know, things are a little rough when they broke up. And then she drops. He tells her that Orlando's a super chump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she drops that the reason why she left New York is because... Esteban Calderon, the dad, paid for her to move to St. Gerard. Because they were doing it. <laughs> just, what? I'm just saying, that's, that's what that was getting to. Because she was going to die in, in New York. She would have died if she stayed in New York. Yeah. So what, what was that supposed to mean? Was Tubbs going to kill her? <laughs> <laughs> With all that sweaty was, sex she had to have But they weren't going to protect her. True. I mean, yeah, he can't protect anybody. Tubbs is backed into a corner. The only person he can trust is Sally. And he's like, so who, do you have a gun? No. Okay, who can help me here? She says, the only person on the island is going to be Ruben. And he's off to go kill Leon and Xavier. So you better hurry up and go get him. He's like, that's not going to work. She goes, I know, but he already <laughs> left anyway. Wait, <laughs> and we find out real fast that when Ruben shows up at the airport, he says, you guys just drop your guns. And they got two, auto Leon and Xavier have two automatic guns. Ruben has this little six shooter on his hip. He's like, y'all better set your guns down. And they just heard and kill him. And it was the end of the stupidest plan in the history of plans. And the worst part is that Tubbs just yeah. watches from the bushes. Like, <laughs> he watches him get killed. Like, did you give him a warning? Just watching, like, this is never going to work. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, make a signal or something. Like, hey, you're stupid. This isn't going to work. <laughs> I think Tubbs was sort of hoping, like, maybe he'll do it for me. That was never going to happen. <laughs> like, announces it. Hey, I'm going to shoot you guys. <laughs> So we go back to the island in and the clerk is talking to Alicia, who's just like hanging out in the pacing lobby. Pacing around. She's pacing. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's when the clerk says the story about how Calderon used to bring money to this island. And then since Tubbs killed Esteban, there's been no money coming to this island anymore. And, and then Alicia says, like rolling her eyes, like, yeah, so bad here in paradise. Vanessa. Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my rant moment. All right. And this is pervasive through this show and other shows and other things in real life, too. So you got to bear with me here for a minute. You no, know grinds my gears. <laughs> 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 is that when people are insinuating that because you live on a tropical island, you live in quote unquote paradise? They poor. They really poor with no connection to the mainland. They got no money, nowhere. To, everyone lives in the hotel, they got nothing. How is this paradise that you live here? Maybe the drug money on that little tiny island was good. And no matter how paradise this trop this little tiny tropical island is, they got nothing. No radio, no TV. There's only one plane that seats five people that can get you off the island. Like if something bad happens, you got to swim for it. How is this paradise? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it has probably been so long since they've done any good cocaine. Like, it is just insane. You know, I mean, well, that's, people used to pay it. for stuff on the island and just cocaine. That was like currency to them. It's all gone. All because of Tubbs. Tubbs couldn't keep it in his pants. His sweaty, True. sweaty pants. <laughs> then Alicia just goes upstairs and barges in on Sally. And this is when Sally drops some truth bombs on Alicia where, hey, Buying the tickets and stuff was all a ruse just to get you to go away so that he can have his shootout to OK Corral with the Calderons. So he knows that you're out of the way so you're not. And, and not to keep you safe. He just doesn't really want you in his hair. <laughs> By the way, did you get sweaty with him? Because that's the end of that. <laughs> so Tubbs is still out kind of stumbling around the town and he finds out where he finds where all the people are. They're all at this church. The worst church Ever. It's the worst preacher I've ever seen. He's like, screw you. Oh, just... You're going to die and I don't care. <laughs> We're not going to help it's you. It's not the preacher that it's the guy in the audience. Well, he's not wrong, though, that old man. He's like, they're a bunch of cowards. They're never going to do anything. Cowards, everybody. <laughs> 
they just kick him out. They blame him for the murders. They blame him for everything. And like, you just have to leave. No one's going to help you. Like, man, wow. That's a harsh. <laughs> wow. Granted, Dominic, granted, all 10 people that live there are probably pretty scared that this guy's going to show up and shoot up their island. So, I mean, <laughs> you know. So now the episode's going to pick up even faster than on the scene changes so i'm just calling them quickies now it <laughs> runs into xavier at the bar who had run out of drinks at the airport there's just some awkwardness between them Tubbs then runs into the sympathetic boat captain who overhears the plans that they were going to kill Tubbs, and he just shows up and hands him a gun that happens a little bit later just kind of putting those two together the women show up first at the airport they taxi out there leon xavier are just there hanging out waiting for the plane to come in they're going to oversee the ladies as they hang out in the airport break room they're yeah, girlfriends the air- of crescenton pass yeah the besties now hanging out going shopping waiting for tubs to get shot <laughs> the plane finally radios in it's approaching at the police station tubs finds that it's locked and he can't get in but that's when the boat captain shows up and gives him that huge shotgun and then there's this really weird scene with Tubbs standing like like you're saying, John, in a Western movie, he's standing on the lawn of the island in, and he's loading up his shotgun and it's zooming in multiple times on Tubbs as he's standing out there. He's just waiting to be killed. <laughs> <laughs> Doing this thing, the music in the scenes, where you get this little like flute playing, only it's not like a Western. Flute's playing like a like a Bruce Lee movie or something, which is very distracting. <laughs> so let's just skip all of this in-between nonsense and just go to the airport for the end scene here. Plane lands, Orlando gets off. He's, he harasses the two ladies for a little bit, threatens to shoot Alicia and then leaves. Leon, Orlando, and Xavier then walk to the island inn? Well, yeah, it's right there. You don't even need to take the taxi. <laughs> this is when Tubbs decides to do the old rock on the gas pedal trick. You know, <laughs> you, you put a rock on the gas pedal. That way, if someone starts the truck, it just starts going. <laughs> so if someone started that truck at any point in the next five minutes, like they'd be in trouble. <laughs> well, Tubbs is ready. He set that up. He's got his gun. He, instead of starting the truck, he just pushes it, puts it in gear and pushes it, gets over to the police station, shoots and kills Xavier. But Orlando and Leon stop him from being able to get Xavier's gun. At the airport, Alicia hears the gunfire. She takes off to go help her man. And she does get to Xavier and grabs his gun. While Tubbs is out running around, actually jumps off the roof of the police station, which, by the way, in real life, he really hurt his ankle when he did that. You could tell. Yeah, it in, hurt in bad. It, you yeah, can you can tell. <laughs> Tubbs is taking heavy fire. Alicia sneaks around the island in and actually shoots and kills Leon, Leon as he's running by. Because he's a terrible henchman. <laughs> and because Vesta, and Vanessa has experience murdering people. <laughs> Orlando sneaks through the hotel, captures Alicia, and holds her hostage. And then tell, starts yelling at Tubbs to come out and come face him. Alicia gets away. Orlando shoots her. Tubbs shoots and kills Orlando. And then runs over to his woman who's laying in the grass, picks her up, and carries her into the island inn. Now, you would think there's still a few minutes to go in this episode. We're going to find out that everyone's going to be okay. But no, freeze frame as he's carrying Alicia into the hotel episode over. Who knows what happens to her? Who knows how he really gets off the island? Who knows how the people of the town respond to him in this whole shootout? All kinds of questions I, left I'm at the end of this sure episode. I'm pretty sure they're going to make him sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> Including most of the big question for you as the Calderon story ends. Where is the baby? <laughs> <laughs> the uh-huh. whole Calderon family is dead now. Who's got Tubbs Jr.? Who's got Tubbs Jr.? Who's got him? Didn't the last thing we saw at the last time we met the Calderones, didn't they still have Tubbs Jr.? Orlando? Yeah, they got him away. They took the baby out of the car before the car blew up. He said, you take him to the house or something or you take him away. He had the baby. So Tubbs Ju- Rico Jr. So now the only people who knew where Rico Jr. were are now all dead. So he was he living with some nanny somewhere now? <laughs> who raised him i need to know no. i was so disappointed in that i thought for sure when i first watched the episode i'm like oh good they're gonna find out no <laughs> let's just go back and think about the scheme that orlando calderon had i'm going to forge a raffle in miami to get tubs to an island where i will make him wait on an island uncomfortably guy from his assay put in jail this girlfriend of his that i banged once and then in three <laughs> days i'm gonna show up we're gonna 
uh, do a showdown, OK Corral style. This is his scheme. I know, uh, John. You know, I think is... the only way it would have been worse is if they tried to drop an anvil on him at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I know, John. This is the exact problem I had with this episode. I'm going to do the same thing on my final thoughts to cover, like, you know, it would have been more exciting. Like, they're trying to hunt tubs while he's on the island before. Orlando shows up. I don't know. Something like that. Instead of just letting him stumble around. He needed to get some exercise. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's going to let him stew. Hell yeah. He's got an ex-girlfriend there. I bet you he's being tortured. When we show <laughs> up there in three days, we're going to get him. <laughs> Before we get there, let's go talk about this episode's music. Unfortunately, John doesn't look too bright in the choice that was for this episode. But let's go talk about it. All right, John, normally we get an amazing music selection in the episode. And you always give us this deep rundown on the fantastic 80s bands and the legends from the 60s and 70s that end up in an episode of Miami Vice. But this week, it's something quite different. We get one song by <laughs> by Laws uh, Neto. Um, yeah, he's a professional <laughs> musician and songwriter. He's actually been around since the 70s work he did with uh, actually with Ben King and the Drifters before he'd eventually do two albums. I guess one bonus is that he's had songs covered by like Shaka Khan and Joe Walsh and Rick James. I mean, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> he's also re re recorded on 35 different albums. So that's pretty good. I mean, that's a <laughs> lot of freaking albums. Yeah, he's he stays so, busy. He stays busy. Stays busy. At 17, he was playing guitar on tour with Benny King. Benny King's famous for the song Stand By Me, as well as a number of other hits. He would then leave and join a band called Moon. And they would be signed by CBS Records. They would do two albums. They would be semi-popular. And then Moon would break up and he would become the house guitarist for Imagination Records. He would leave that job after being recruited by former Moon drummer Luigi Salvoni to form a new band called Sniff in the Tears. Yes, Sniff in the Tears. <laughs> So the band itself was inspired by old demos from uh, Moon. They would also release two albums, but during touring of the second album, Laws would break his arm after a motorbike accident. All these musicians seem to have reasons why they're losing money and not going on tour because they hurt themselves riding some sort of motorized vehicle. Car accidents, motorcycle yeah. accidents. Yeah. So just FYI, if you're in a band, don't get a motorcycle. It's not cool. <laughs> Couldn't play for six months. We spent that time writing songs, which would inspire him to go out and start his solo career. His first album in 86, critically acclaimed, actually. So in 87, looking to his third album, he decided he wanted to build a record studio at his house to record the album. He started going around to record companies, and they all told him, you're crazy. We're not going to pay for you to put a studio in your house. Like, that's nuts. Who do you think you are, Robert Plant? Eventually, he would find someone. That someone being Gene Simmons from Kiss. Turns out, RCA would would be financing Gene Simmons to fund his uh, to fund his own label. He would agree to pay for the studio and make the next album with Laws. And what's great is at this point I am reading from a biography written by Laws Neto himself. <laughs> it might be a, a little skewed in his his way, but this is my, one of my favorite things in this whole article is he talks about how he didn't realize how difficult construction can be. And after many delays and eight months and three contractors later, he had a studio where he decided where he recorded an album. He would have to remix and then remix the remixes and then remix the remixes and it would never get released. RCA BGM would pull Gene's money in 1990. That was kind of the end of his solo career. <laughs> he would open a studio up to other uh, other artists and actually record a little bit himself until his wife would leave him and take his kid, which would send him spiraling. He would take a two year break from music, actually turned into a 10 year drought. So then he started basically got a fresh start as a TV and movie composer. According to this biography that he wrote, he is still composing. He is still touring and releasing music. Right? Well, Google found me one Lawrence T. Neto, a hypnotherapist 
Physiologist and NLP practitioner in Brighton, England, who looks suspiciously a lot like Laws Neto, like almost to the T. And it turns out for 65 pounds for the first hour and a half, you can get hypnotherapy, and then it's only 60 pounds for each additional hour. So there's your music. John, I totally thought you said hippotherapy. So at the first, I was like, what the hell is hippotherapy? The twists and turns of the music segment. <laughs> From being 17 years old and on tour to ending in hypnotherapy. <laughs> well, let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. Because like I mentioned earlier, this May not have been the most exciting episode, <laughs> and we are hoping to get more answers from the Caldron storyline. I don't know where I'm going with this. I don't think there's a good ending to this. Let's go <laughs> to give our final thoughts. All right, I'm going to kick off. Just keep it real short, because, John, I know you, you're going to cover a lot of the same stuff that I have a problem with on this episode. This episode could have been fantastic, because they're on this island. Leon and Xavier could have been hunting Tubbs and Alicia, as they tried to escape the island, there could have been shootouts and explosions and boats being attacked and and Alicia being taken hostage and Tubbs breaking in and getting her out all before Orlando shows up. And then a big shootout at the airport where then Tubbs and Sally and Alicia all escape in the airplane at the last minute. There was, the whole setup was here. There was a great story arc here. But instead... We got this really boring episode of him just walking around. Like what you were saying, John, at the end, it would have been a lot easier if Leon and Xavier just would have captured those two and held them at gunpoint until Orlando showed up and then killed him and then the episode was over. But instead, they just let him like free range, like they're going to hunt him for sport later in the episode or something. So I don't know. I, John, I know you have a lot of the same thoughts. So what are your final thoughts on this episode? This is the worst scheme alive. I mean, like... It's a fun episode with Tubbs. Raffle ticket, goes to an island, and there's like all these possibilities. There's a guy there he put on death row. There's an ex-girlfriend. And like this, there's all of these, these different areas that you felt like Vice wanted to go in. But then it feels like that, like, it's almost like they, they set all this stuff up and then forgot to pull the, the trigger on any of it. Think about the scheme. Think about everything Orlando Calderon had to go through putting this thing together. He had to take one of the kids off the island and ship him to Miami to sell <laughs> raffle tickets. Okay. Paid for a flight. Got him a guardian because that kid's not old enough to fly by himself. So got him a guardian. Took him to Miami. Sold raffle tickets. And, uh, which gets Tubbs to the island with his girlfriend. Gets, uh, gets him there. He's got him there. He pays all this money to get a guy off a of death row and get him... To this island, like to intimidate Dubs, and it's like, okay, everything's setting up great. So now, all they gotta do is have the guy from Death Row try and kill Tubbs, and Orlando doesn't even need to go to the island. Like his master plan worked. They trapped him on the island with all of Orlando's guys, right? But no, that's not how the scheme works. The scheme works is that they're just gonna hang out for about two days on vacation and then eventually orlando is going to show up and it's just going to be orlando and his two bodyguards versus tubs <laughs> essentially is junior high fight everyone's talking about it during school and at the end of school they just meet in the back corner and throw their backpacks down and start fighting that's how the scheme kind of ended like you put all of this money and time devotion to get them there and then ended by, uh, we're just going to try and shoot him. <laughs> I mean, it's just a lot of missed I mean, opportunities. It, it is, but it worked. But the thing is, is that it fo totally falls into like what you would imagine Tubbs' fantasy is. He's in a, on a tropical island with his girlfriend and an ex lover, and he gets to play the hero and kill Calderon. <laughs> the only other thing I'm going to say is that, man. Tubbs has officially murdered the entire Calderon family. <laughs> there is never going to be another Calderon descendant again because of Rico Tubbs. <laughs> well, except for Rico Jr., but we won't, what we if won't Rico get Jr. into that. What if Rico Jr. is now Rico Calderon and years from now seeks revenge against the man who killed his entire family? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. That's how you spin off the new show. <laughs> Well, Melissa, I know you have a different opinion than me and John because you're focused on one thing. Where's that baby? <laughs> <laughs> Where is that chubby baby? 
<laughs> I want to see it. No. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree with you guys that the, my thing has always been that that episode is boring. It's really freaking boring. <laughs> and it's not even like, yes, the scheme could have worked and if they would have done this they would have done that just make it more interesting okay <laughs> i got problems with the writers because i would love to actually see a good episode where it's just i mean the only episode where it's good where it's focused around tubs is the episode where they, his family blows up <laughs> what did i say <laughs> writers give him a good episode for once the stupid episode where he was stuck in the prison that was ridiculous this episode is ridiculous when they do Crockett episodes, which are coming, where it's just Crockett, those are coming. They're good. You're like hooked on them. And, and then the stories are not stupid. So they're not they're not rambling stories. They're not. Well, I mean, they're obviously far fetched because it's still Miami Vice and they still do things like Crockett gets wrapped up in something in some town that he's visiting and stuff like that. His girlfriend causes the death of three police officers at a evidence lockup. <gasps> They've already done that. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm disappointed, I guess, is what it is. Like, give Tubbs yeah, an the, actual he, good storyline. Crockett and his partner murder an entire town in the swamps so, of... Oh, um... get over the swamps. <laughs> There's a dead Nobody town. Nobody cares about those people in the swamps, okay? <laughs> I keep telling you that. <laughs> you care if that was your play, uh, plane full of cocaine. <laughs> anyway, you know what that plane of cocaine could do for this island? <laughs> It could give him a phone. Can it give him a working phone? <laughs> well, that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Miami Vice. I know that we're kind of hard on it. You know, it's, it's boring. We're not hiding that. It's just kind of slow. <laughs> well, we're okay with that because you know why? We know that we love Tubbs exclusive ep- That's going to do it for us this week. Be sure to check out the website, GoWithTheHeat.com. You can go find the links to this show our youtube channel or tune in anywhere that you can listen to the show itunes google play you can find all the links to that you can also find our exclusive feeds if you want just this week in vice or just the music segment in its own standalone feed you can go to the website go with the heat.com you can get all the information on how to subscribe you can also find the ways to contact us we would love to hear from you what are your thoughts on this episode what are your thoughts on getting hypnotherapy from Laws and Edo? Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com or tweet at us at go with the heat. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see y'all next time. Bye, pal.